summer school and, and uh, welcome to all the attendees who are joining. I see there's people still trickling in on the Zoom uh, meeting. So if you're coming in now, welcome wherever you might be. Um, it's good morning to those of us that are here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, <laughs> Hyun, what, what time zone are you in? Central or? Uh, central. Central. So you're two hours, you're two hours ahead of us. It's 1030 there. So anyway, um, I'm still eating my breakfast, so I'm going to turn this over to Hyun. And so we're we're excited for this morning. Uh, we have a a full half morning, a full half day, a full morning of public presentations. And um, over the last two days, we've learned an awful lot about uh, molecular data, both genomics data and uh, data describing the character of organic matter, metabolomics data, and how those data are collected and how they're processed and analyzed. Today, we're gonna to take the next step, which is taking those data and using them to formulate metabolic reaction networks for communities of organisms or individual organisms, and how to then solve those reaction networks to describe the metabolic activity of a community or an organism in the context of a particular environment. And that will take us then to the next step of putting those that information into reactive transport models, which will be our topic tomorrow. So we have some presentations this morning on metabolic network building and metabolic reaction modeling. And our first speaker is Hyun Sab Song, a professor from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. And he is, um, has written uh, an excellent review paper on the diversity of different types of metabolic models. It's, uh, what, a few years old now? Back in, what, 2000, maybe 15, 14? Yeah, yeah, so um, definitely I'll put a link to that paper into the Discord chat. I would encourage you to look that up. And um, Hyun, I would invite you to give us uh, an overview of metabolic modeling. So thank you for joining us. Okay, uh, can you see my slide? Yes, it looks good. It's in screen mode. Okay, so um, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Hyun Sub Song, um, uh, University of Nebraska Lincoln. Um, I'll be talking about like overview of different approaches of uh, metabolic modeling. And as Tim uh, introduced, today we'll focus on metabolic network building and then flux balance analysis using the genome skeletal models from metagenomes or MEX or uh, and also we'll be talking about the uh, integration of uh, metabolomics data to expand the scope of metabolic network modeling. So you'll hear a lot about flux balance analysis uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the tutorial sessions by Jenica. And then uh, Chris also talk, will be here about metabolic flux analysis from Mark Buckman after me. But what I'm going to talk today is without focusing one approach, I'll talk about broad range of metabolic modeling approaches that are complementary in nature. So uh, this is the uh, quotation that motivated my talk. And uh, those who study microbial communities that you may uh, know this uh, statement that microorganisms do not live in isolation. But similarly, metabolic models do not exist in isolation. So, uh, to fully understand what these models are and what can do, we have to look at their relatives and the family they belong to. So this is a quotation from late Rutherford Harris in his book, 1978, Mathematical Modern Techniques. Models, models are never fully understood except in relation to other members of the family to which they belong. So, if you are familiar with the old school like a classification of cell population modeling, and then uh, you may heard about this criteria, so segregated model. If population is segregated into individual organisms, this model segregated model, otherwise unsegregated model. And if model accounts for internal chemical composition or physical structure is called structured model, otherwise unstructured model. And if the states of individual cells defined by their internal chemical composition and physical structures are not the same, and the model accounts for this variation, the model is called distributed, otherwise non-distributed, 
Also, metabolic processes or cell growth, they are intrinsically stochastic. So if the model accounts for that, these random processes, it's called a stochastic model, otherwise deterministic model. And here on the right, you can see there's some graphical uh, classification of a model it's based on what I said just here, segregated versus unsegregated, structured versus unstructured, and then deterministic versus stochastic. And population mass model is one of the approaches that handle deterministic model. And there are some connection uh, between this deterministic model that do not use the population mass model can be reduced into unstructured model under simplifying assumptions. And interestingly, this classification come from like Juchi et al. and Fredrickson, Ram Krishna, they are all from University of Minnesota. And I think this classification is still uh, inspirational and then uh, found in the textbooks. And I, I, I refer to those classification for my work. And in this talk, I do not cover segregated, distributed, or stochastic modeling, but to cover structured versus, versus unstructured modeling. So those segregation models were distributed. Stochastic models are important issue for modeling cell population and their variation. But here, here what we are going to talk about is that metabolic modeling, and then uh, focusing on like a uniform distribution of cells but still we are focusing on whether they are structured or unstructured, how they are regulated or unregulated. So I'll be using uh, some graphical representation uh, for metabolic systems and I identified three key components in describing metabolic models here. First of all, network below here is the metabolic network and arrows represent fluxes and nodes here rep metabolize. Also, these reactions and uh, metabolite production consumption, they are regulated by genetic circuit. So I hear uh, another level of uh, network is called genetic network and a regulatory network. And also my classification or discussion is so dependent on whether this model can account for dynamic interaction with environment. Therefore, depending on uh, how they account for these three elements, I'll have uh, structured versus unstructured model, or depending on how they account for genetic regulation, it can be fully mechanistic model or cybernetic or kinetic model, and also dynamic versus in static model. So yesterday I promised to talk about uh, the cybernetic modeling approach more, so I have a few slides on that today. And cybernetic models um, is a sort of AI based model. So they assume and they view microorganisms as uh, artificially intelligent systems. So uh, we think human beings are intelligent. That's true, we have a brains, but that does not necessarily mean our behaviors are intelligent. They are different. Intelligent being and being intelligent are different concepts. So for example, I make a lot of mistakes every day and I say a few stu stupid words every day to get my friends and family angry. Even in the morning that I was in a panic for two seconds by looking at my watch at 8.45. I was in panic because, oh, I had to talk at 8.30, but I realized, oh yeah, I'm in Nebraska in Central Time. So therefore, so this is one recent example of being non-intelligent. So by contrast, microorganisms are not intelligent beings, but their behaviors look intelligent in many cases. So because they had to survive like a, a continuous variation of environment through a long history of time, they had to adapt to new environment and their genetic circuit has been evolved to cope with those variation environment for a long time period. Therefore, they, their the way they regulate their metabolic reactions on the varying environment, very, very intelligent. They know what to eat, what to consume first and what next, how to change their metabolic reactions under different context and time, uh, time and conditions. So cybernetic model really uh, focus on their intelligent uh, behaviors. So 
The term cybernetic comes from Greek word meaning the art of steering. Then, and they set up the cybernetic necessary sets of goal and describe actions taken to achieve that goal. So here can, you have a ship and the arriving in an island is their goal. So this is optimal pass without any obstacles, but while they're navigating the sea, there will be winds against it. Also, there are rocks, therefore they had to change their direction and then the way to approach to the goal. So that this should be determined dynamically. So cybernetic model um, describe metabolic system as a dynamic control system and then uh, predict their behavior every time step depending on their environmental conditions. There are great, there is a great analogy or relationship to a machine learning technique called reinforced learning. Reinforced learning builds up intelligence based on feedback close, feedback close loop. Therefore, they also have, um, so I, if I take the same uh, example here, and then this is agent. Agent uh, detect or sense, senses environmental condition and take actions based on uh, existing policy. And then they evaluate the outcome of their actions, whether act, these actions really promoted uh, their goal or not. Depending on their positive and negative uh, effect, this can be reward or a penalty. And based on that, they update their policy. And then this update iteratively goes on through this feedback cycle. In the cybernetic model, cybernetic model assumes that this iterative learning is done. Already, the system has an optimal policy. Therefore, it knows how to respond optimally to the change of in, in, in environment. So that's a difference. Therefore, cybernetic model has developed only the pre in advance develop the optimal control laws and then predict how microorganisms will respond to the change in the environment. So more specifically, the cybernetic model really focuses on the optimal regulation of their metabolic uh, pathways. So regulation occurs through transcriptional and translational regulation. And so uh, bi biochemical reaction require, involve the enzymes as a catalyst. If there's a substrate and in order to uh, metabolize this substrate enzyme, many different enzymes should be involved. This enzyme should be produced through, through these pathways and then uh, probably their goal is to maximize the production of a biomass. And if there is an alternative substrate and then cell should synthesize different set of enzymes. Some of the enzymes are still uh, commonly valid, but there are distinct enzymes that should be uh, synthesized fresh. Therefore, cell has to make a decision because cell has a limited internal resources. Internal resources include like ribosome, RNA polymerases, ATP. These are resources for, required for the synthesis of new enzymes. Therefore, these resources are limited. Cell has to make a good decision how to use these resources for the synthesis of the selective enzyme. And so, most fundamentally, we can uh, describe this uh, regulation as a fundamental level, but uh, unfortunately, detailed regulatory mechanisms are not completely known. This is particularly true for environmental microorganisms. We do not know how they regulate their, their, their um, enzyme synthesis and then metabolic pathways. So cybernetic model replaced this part using cybernetic control law. This is an example of cybernetic control laws matching and proportional loss, these, were, these are derived from solving optimal control problem in advance. So we don't have to solve it every time, just the equations are already available. So mechanistic details of regulations are replaced with a direct description of enzyme synthesis and activity controlled by two control variables, UI and BI here. And also, if you look at the UI value, there's a, there's a summation of one meaning that this accounts for metabolic burden. When resources are used for the synthesis of one set of enzyme, this cannot be used for other set of enzyme. Therefore, regulation allocation becomes an important problem. 
And I have shown uh, this figure yesterday, and this is a uh, dioxy cross of CLFCL acetoca and all glucose and xylose. Glucose is preferred substrate, therefore, it really promotes the growth a lot. And then uh, after glucose is depleted, there's a lag phase for changing, shif shifting the enzyme setting from glucose to another, the light xylose, and then it grows again. But in this case, growth rate is slower than the case on glucose. So this is an old example, but even now you can find a paper from NatureCom and then they used a cybernetic model and then uh, modeled how different groups of amino acids, in this case, of four groups of amino acids were used for the experiments and used the cybernetic model, how cybernetic model is effective in simulating, predicting their sequential and then simultaneous consumption of these multiple uh, sources. So even in the application to environmental system, uh, this is the one example I, I talked about yesterday, but this is another one. And then, so in our experiment, we observed very uh, complex phenomenon says that in denied denitrification process, we observed significant time delay in gene expression. So this is a nitrate uh, consumption profile and data and simulation. And if you look at the gene expression level of NARG and NAPA genes, this is the genes that are catalyzing the first step of denitrification process. Their level goes up even after nitrate is depleted. So maximum was found here from experimental data that we couldn't identify why this happens. And we used the cybernetic model and explained probably the interplay between genes and environmental variables and through regulation can cause this delay. We nicely predicted this time delay using cybernetic model. And so for those who are interested in knowing more about cybernetic model, you can uh, look at the review article on it, uh, 2012, also 2018, we have a, we have published a book, and then Ram Krishna is a leading author for this book. Now, um, with this knowledge on cybernetic model, now I'm, I'm ready to describe the different approaches because you, I assume that you uh, have some good sense of uh, uh, kinetic and other type of modeling, but not necessarily cybernetic modeling. Now, we have to know that modeling is, is just approximation. It's idealization of reality, complex systems, but it doesn't have to, or doesn't capture every aspect of reality. So it defines what, kept, what our model wants to uh, need to capture, and then based on that, what we can uh, test our hypothesis. So there are great analogy between uh, human models and the micro, uh, microbial models. I took my picture uh, I sacrificed myself for science discussion in this case. So for modeling microorganisms, we may want to have very detailed, like a complete model, a perfect model. So fully dynamic whole cell model. These models are already available for uh, relatively simple organisms. So, but these models are very rare. I mean, sometimes not available, even though this is very attractive and sexy, but you, it may be difficult to find those models a lot, for, particularly for environmental microorganisms. And we even do not know that who they are in many cases. So it's similar to that we have used a very uh, a hand, handsome uh, fashion model, but they do not represent the reality open. And kinetic models uh, often do not account account for regulation. This is similar to the use of uh, animal models for studying humans. So they, these are useful and these, uh, they show very interesting dynamics. We can understand we, the real system by that, but the scope of prediction is limited to a certain range because the way they respond to perturbation might be very different. So for example, this animal, they uh, sleep and they walk, they eat, very similar to human beings, but their response to perturbations or stimulation may be very different from human beings. Now, cybernetic models describe regulatory behaviors 
by based on uh, artificial intelligence system modeling. And these are not real cells. And then this is a hypothesis based modeling still useful and depending on how we design, how to program their regulatory behaviors to the resulting model can be very useful. And then constraint-based model accounts for often the very detailed chemical uh, metabolic structure in the network. And then, but uh, the origin of that is steady state model. So we can, this is very useful. We can, on the given conditions, we can look at what happens inside a cell by looking at uh, detailed pathways very similar to anatomy model for human beings. So um, I'll cover various different approaches for metabolic modeling, including metabolic flux analysis, MFA, and flux balance analysis, and flux variability analysis, and elementary flux model analysis, and dynamic uh, extension of FBA, and also EMA, uh, called the TFV and then microscopic, microscopic bioreaction model, MBM. And also I talk about simulated modeling approach, their combination with other approaches. And finally, I'll show how they, are, they can be connected uh, as a network. And it's challenging to cover all of these op different approaches in one uh, lecture, uh, particularly during the remaining 20 minutes or so. But I'll be using the tutorial toy network uh, then show how they are related, and then how uh, I can explain their concepts. So here you can see, first of all, capillaries, extracellular metabolites, and the intracellular metabolites represent these nodes in the network. So here, outside the cell, S, biomass, and product, they are extracellular. And then M1 to M4 are intracellular metabolites. And then R1 to R7 are reactions or fluxes. And we can represent these reactions uh, as stoichiometry. So this is called stoichiometric representation of reaction and of network. We can uh, set up dynamic mass balances for intracellular metabolites from M1 to M4. And this small M represents concentration of capital M. Capital M represents their names, but small M represents their concentration. Similarly, small r1 to r7 represent reaction rate of fluxes, but r, capital R1 to R7 represent their names. So you can make uh, write their mass balances using uh, vector and matrix notation conveniently. And if if you want to develop uh, develop very detailed kinetic model by accounting for intracellular dynamics, you may use because Michaelis mental kinetics for individual reactions. For example, R1 here is, uh, depends on the concentration of S, R2, concentration of M1, and so forth. The problem in doing this is that we the model will end up with so many parameters. So R1 has two parameters, small K1 and capital K1. We have R1 to R7, so total number of parameters 14. So, it's difficult to collect data that uh, can accurately determine these parameters all. Therefore, what people do is that they assume steady state for intracellular metabolites. In general, intracellular dynamics are faster than extracellular dynamics. Therefore, we can assume that intracellular metabolites immediately uh, arrives in steady state while extracellular variables keep changing in time. This is called quasi-steady state approximation. On the quasi-steady state, then this mass balance is, just becomes one, a zero. So here, this is called stoichiometric matrix. Um, in, in the literature, uh, they use uh, capital S, but I have used N because I use the S for uh, substrate. So N R equals zero. This is stoichiometric uh, reaction and at steady state. And the goal here is to determine flux vector from R1 to R7. And but, it, but this is underdetermined the system because we have uh, seven unknowns, but four equations. So we have more unknowns than equations. Therefore, uh, 
the solution is not uniquely determinable. Rather, a solution forms flux cone like that. So it has an infinite number of solutions. They form flux cone in flux space. For example, this is one particular solution that flux here through this pathway can have one, 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 or Okay, so this solution uh, corresponds to a specific node point in flux space on the edge in this case. But there is another solution I can assume, okay. So R1 is two and then there is split and then there is different flux distribution. This is another solution. This In this case, this is one of the point inside the flux cone. So uh, we don't know which one is true solution. Therefore, we need well, there are two uh, approaches in solving this issue. We can add more measurement. For example, we can add a flux measurement from C certain MFA. This is the topic that Mark Brockman will talk about after me. And or we can just introduce like hypothesis cell may be maximizing certain objective like flux mass, the biomass, mass, biomass production. So flux balance analysis, cybernetic modeling really shares this aspect. So. And MFA, uh, you, you will hear uh, more about MFA from Mark and in greater detail, but uh, this is one slide I, I prepared for that. So uh, MFA, they use a labeled nutrients and they, they, they perform experiments based on labeled carbon and nitrogen. And then they measure how their concentration of different labeling, uh, labeled carbons and nitrogen change in time. And they use simple metabolic network model and uh, typically this is a moderate size focusing on met central metabolic pathway. And using this dynamic model, they predict the concentration change of this labeled metabolites and compare with experimental data to determine fluxes inside the metabolic network. Once the lack of fit is satisfactory, then we can use that as a measured flux, uh, fluxes. And this is useful and we can use this data uh, to constrain genome scale metabolic network model and meaning that our original space is too huge, but it can be significantly reduced to smaller space by adding, this, by adding these constraints. Or we can use this data for validating the FBA prediction later. FBA approach, and as I said, they uh, set up a goal to, for example, typical uh, objective function is maximization of biomass. But if you maximize biomass in this case R5, the solution becomes infinite. Therefore, we have to constrain um, some of the fluxes, typically uptake of flux. Under this range uh, of uh, R1 is uptake rate, then we'll have, uh, we can solve the problem by performing linear programming. In this case, maximization of biomass really realized by taking off as along this pathway. Again, uh, this corresponds to one particular solution on the edge. But if you constrain like a different way, then this solution changes along this direction and that. In the yield space, yield space means that we really normalize the fluxes. These all these three solutions <clears throat> correspond to one single point in yield space. Also, uh, flux variability analysis is an important concept. Uh, the K-based uh, FVA app also run, in, includes FVA uh, by default. And then to explain that concept, I had to modify a little bit the, the network. And then we have now split of this flux from M0 and M1. By solving MF, FVA, you'll, you can determine all fluxes other than these uh, fluxes. So therefore, after performing FVA, the question is that how, uh, to what extent individual fluxes determined by FBA can change. Therefore, as a second step of FBA, we can solve uh, another linear program pro problem by maximizing and minimizing these individual fluxes. In this case, we maximize, minimize R8 and R9 to get the range of their, uh, the fluxes, in this case, 0 to 1 for both cases. Elementary mode analysis is a, a complementary approach. It doesn't perform uh, FBA, rather it, identify, it identifies all skeletal pathway uh, 
core, sub, core set of a pathway that can represent all metabolic uh, pathway inside the network. So in this example, uh, there are three skeletal pathways. First one is pink here and the green and the blue. Why they are important? Because any flux vector can be represented by complex combinations of these three pathways. Each pathway has, pathway has a different biomass yield. We can get the biomass, uh, highest biomass yield from first pathway, EM1, but from EM2 and EM3, their biomass yield low, becomes lower to 0.3 or 0.7. So these three elementary modes or elementary flux modes represent uh, the, uh, correspond to edge vectors of this flux cone or vertices in, in, in the space. As I said, any feasible solution that's inside this flux cone or this uh, convex hull can be represented by complex combinations of these three uh, pathways. There is a dynamic extension of FBA, and then um, because FBA is intrinsically steady state model, but we can simulate dynamic uh, variation by modeling uptake rate like using uh, kinetic equations. For example, this is uh, uh, similar to previous example, growth of uh, E. coli on glucose and xylose, and you can see dynamic, uh, the regulatory behavior, the glucose consumed first in xylose, uh, followed by xylose consumption. And then to account for this dioxic consumption pattern, then we have to consider the catabolic, catabolite repression by including the suppression of xylose uptake by glucose concentration. So, but this is the part that cybernetic model can take care of well. So uh, this is the three pathways I have shown in the previous slide. And then we model, the, we can model the fluxes through this individual elementary modes. And then we introduce these enzymes and, and then uh, cybernetic variable V here as a control variable. So total uptake rate of substrate S is represented by complex combinations of these three uh, fluxes to individual elementary modes. And these weighting factors are not constant. The enzyme level changes and their control factor, control variables also change in time. Therefore, they represent how these combinations of three elementary modes changes dynamically depending on environmental conditions. So this is an example. And then assume that this is actual uh, flux change along, uh, through three elementary modes in time. Uh, depending on uh, time zone, for example, time zone one, elementary mode one is most dominant, and this mode will be activated significantly. Time two, time zone two, second elementary mode, and time zone three and third elementary mode. But fourth, ele fourth zone, and then this one, there's no single mode that is dominant. Therefore, we have to combine them all to represent their uh, activated reaction. So this is an example how this concept works well. So this is the experimental data from PNNL, and this is a gross of Schwannella onidens MR1. So initially from lactate, lactate is the main carbon source in the beginning, but when lactate is depleted, then uh, it, it utilizes pyruvate as alternative carbon source. And when pyruvate is depleted and acetate is finally used as a carbon source, there, therefore there is significant metabolic, a shift in metabolic pathway while the carbon source is switched over from one to another. So there are three pathways from lactate, three phases, lactate consumption phase and pyruvate consumption phase and the acetate consumption phase. Then uh, by performing elementary mode analysis, then uh, we obtained 35,000 elementary mode and 24,000, and for, this is too many elementary modes. Then I uh, really want to handle this uh, complexity by uh, lumping the elementary modes. There are an alternative approach called the lumped cybernetic model, uh, cybernetic, hybrid cybernetic model or LHCM that really based on this lumped elemental model concept. Therefore, we have just three pathways that are obtained from lumped pathways. 
So the prediction can be validated by comparing with C certain MFA result. Then the initial correlation was pretty good, but there are some deviation for certain data. So we incorporate them and then to improve the prediction. And this is a dynamic uh, shift their metabolic pathways as the carbon source changes from lactate and a part of it and acetate. Oh, sorry about that. Initially, consumes lactate, and then you can see that the blue bars below is a metabolic fluxes. Now shifted to pyruvate, different patterns, and the final acetate. It's 9.05. Thank you. So I speed up a little bit, and now, yeah, this is the, um, the second part of my talk, but I, I intended to uh, go fast because it's representation of the metabolic networks and then using graphically and then also uh, using general mathematical equations. So you may not understand well just in short uh, time I, I, I can have, but uh, just look at my slides after this then. But this is web general representation and depending on how they uh, describe their internal variables, extracellular species, intracellular species, enzymes and other variables involved in regulation. Oh, and then, so I use these uh, icons to represent different types of a model and then uh, how they uh, describe their metabolic network kinetically or whether using quasi-state state approximation and then uh, whether they are using convex analysis like elementary mode analysis or flux balance analysis for regulation part, kinetic, they can kinetically dip, uh, describe regulation or cybernetic control laws or other uh, uh, control laws, rule-based control laws, and then uh, static versus uh, dynamic. This is long term dynamic model, just assume that uh, they do not account for internal structure. So they are called uh, black box model. And the difference is that long cybernetic model accounts for their regulation, but kinetic model doesn't. So fully structured model, fully structured dynamic model, and, and has different uh, forms of a model, and genetically structured kinetic model. Uh, Jamie Young extended cybernetic model to both intracellular reactions as extracellular reactions, and Young's model, if we remove our uh, regulation part from Young's model, it becomes metabolically structured kinetic model. And quasi statistics model very useful, different forms of here. I talked about HCM, hybrid cybernetic model, microscopic bioreaction model, and LHCM, and dynamic FBA, and then FBA, dynamic FBA that is combined with regulation part. And so this is a, a the so-called metabolic model in the landscape. You can see fully structured model, you can see how they are derived from prototype and then under what assumptions and then constraint they can lead to simpler quasi steady state models and then even black box model. And the bottom there, there is a, a black box model, no, not steady state model, but this gray area represent, they don't account for dynamic interaction with the environment. Still, these are useful to understand how metabolic uh, fluxes are activated under given uh, conditions. So this is my last slide for take home message then, which model we have to choose among many. Um, my answer previously was that, so we need to define our questions to address. Once we define our address, our questions to address, then uh, we can take the model, the simplest model if possible, as possible they can address the, the, that question. So the information theoretical uh, criteria such as AIC, BIC are very useful for that. So in this example, then we can fit this data using linear model or polynomial model, but best the optimal choice of model can be uh, determined based on this AIC, BIC, uh, where the, these criteria are, these values are minimum. So if we unnecessarily use complicated complex model, 
then this is similar to the case that we use a sledgehammer to crack a knot. So, but, but for the, to the same question, my answer is a little bit different now. So, we can identify new questions that are critically important but could not be addressable in the past because due to the limitation of our uh, uh, method or the lack of data. But now, summer school really highlight the availability and the utility of multi data for modeling. So this gives an opportunity to think of an integrative modeling approaches to multi integration. By that, we can increase the size of a problem and then we can challenge it to solve a more uh, bigger science questions and the more challenging problems. So, uh, so you can see that my answer has been changed the previous now from now. Okay, so I, uh, I'll stop here. So, okay, how many times I have for questions? Five minutes. Okay, yeah, we have about five minutes. I'll give you a couple quick questions from the Zoom chat. So um, one of the questions that came up early was a question about how, how do we address organisms that have synergistic relationships? So if they exchange metabolites or signal one another, how would you address those in a modeling framework? Synergistic relationship among community? Yeah, among different organisms within the community, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we need a different approaches for that. I think I have not covered that in this talk, but that is uh, uh, covered in my review article 2014. There are data driven models. So, very short uh, population data and clinical models can be used for inferring and predicting their interactions. Signal processing. Modeling is because another type of data in modeling approaches. Your your uh, sound is breaking up a little bit, Ken. I don't know if you changed your speaker position, but um, it was a little hard to hear you there. But here's another question for you: um, for the denitrification example, could you explain more about the potential mechanisms of delay in regulation? Was the cell growing actively? How many generations was the delay? Was it because of slow kinetics of enzyme or product production or degradation? And how widespread is this phenomenon? Well, there might be a very little unbroken. Yeah, still a little bit hard to hear you. Uh, while I'm talking, you can mute yourself. Then it, then may help. I don't know. OK. It may not help much. But anyways, so there, there must be multiple uh, mechanism we can use to explain that, but uh, one mechanism we uh, identified that, is that there is a process of gene expression in uh, through transcription and that is, that is a main source of time delay. Time delay delay was significant several days, so that uh, generation time microbial generation hours uh, in environmental conditions that. It can be longer though. So there must be many other possibilities to explain that phenomena, but this is a one of them, and we think this is a plausible mechanism to explain that. Sorry about if I that uh, broken again. Oh, I was a little better, especially at the end there. Um, here's a question that just came through the text channel. Um, in in Discord, which, if any of these modeling strat strategies can be implemented in cultures and which can be applied to complex microbial communities where we might only be able to hypothesize the main nutrient cycles? I think that uh, this can be implementable for complex microbial communities, but the assumption there is that we um, we may not account for individual, every single uh, organism in the community, but we, we may group them or we can take them as a one uh, supra organism. Uh, for example, still we can apply the metabolic uh, network modeling, flux panel, balance analysis for complicated network. And then 
Of course, there are some uncertainties in the uh, in prediction. Therefore, it is important to incorporate omics data to constrain the model and to narrow down the the, the level of uncertainties.